From the turn of the century, when the Petersburg Realty Company first bought this piece of land, later to be named Colonial Heights, folks felt welcome here. Quite often, people came seeking refuge from the hustle and bustle of Richmond to the north, Petersburg to the south. It's always been a good place to live and work, and a great place to raise a family. In 1828, at the age of 25, a young man named David Dunlop came to Virginia from Scotland. He had developed a special sweeter formula for tobacco, which quickly caught on in America. In a matter of a few years, he became quite wealthy as a planter and processor of tobacco. He was quickly accepted by the Virginia Plantation Society. He married a daughter of Benjamin Harrison, who was the sister of President William Henry Harrison. He purchased 500 acres of land which bordered Swift Creek to the north, right one to the west, and the railroad trestle to the south. He commissioned an architect from Ireland to design a country house which became Mr. Dunlop's permanent home. During the Civil War, the house was used as headquarters for several generals. The house survived with minor damages. In 1870, Mr. Dunlop died and left a very complicated estate. The house and farm were sold several times, but was finally reacquired in 1907 by the grandfather of the late John M. Dunlop. During the early 1900s, Mr. Dunlop attended Yale University, the University of Virginia, and was commissioned a flight officer in the U.S. Navy. The next few years, the farm was used as tobacco plantation and exclusive club as a layover for northern wealthy traveling to Florida. On his return from the service, Mr. Dunlop married Miss Nanette Ford of Richmond. Mr. Mrs. Dunlop quickly filled the house with antiques and returned the house to its original splendor. In the late 1920s, Mr. Dunlop started breeding and buying purebred Guernsey cattle. By 1934, his herd had grown to approximately 250 head. At this time, a milk processing and distribution plant became a part of the farm. The dairy became the largest distributor of dairy products in Southside Virginia. The farm with its miles of board fences was truly beautiful. There were seven tenant houses, horse barns, tractor sheds, implement sheds, and of course cow barns, which were a community in itself. In the early 1960s, the herd was sold, and Mr. Dunlop developed a part of the farm into which is now known as Ellerslie Subdivision. Mr. Dunlop died suddenly in 1972. In 1976, Mrs. Dunlop passed away, leaving no heir to run the farm. In her will, she asked that the furnishings, the house, and the farm be sold. The property has been developed and is now known as Dunlop Farms. I moved to Colonial Heights in 1965. Uh, my husband and I got married that same year, lived in an apartment on Pickwick Avenue. I remember the surroundings as being Clear and Childers Drugstore, Colonial Heights Drug in that area. Um, Dr. Cyrus Patrick Lewis was in that same area. Dr. Whittle had an office on Pickwick Avenue. The post office was located there. The skating ring was down the boulevard where we had quite a few good times with friends. Uh, Rainbow Drive-In, which was a local hangout for the youngsters. The Rainbow's on North Boulevard. It's, um, I think it's now a Chinese restaurant or something. It was a favorite hangout, kind of like a happy days type situation. Another favorite hangout for me was like you. Uh, both during the daytime, uh, living there near the lake, I used to pick up bottles off of, the, off of the beaches in exchange for getting in swimming free. I was known as a bottle boy. And what amazes me is looking back at the fact that they let them bring glass bottles out on those beaches. I never could understand why Lakeview has moved on into the 50s and later 50s and why it started to fade. I didn't know what else kids did in the summer because to me it was a favorite place to go. My memories are not so much memories of names and places, but it's more of a feeling of a close-knit community where people really cared about each other and spent a lot of time looking out for each other. And I remember summers, we spent a lot of time playing outdoors. 
and we were all over town from one end of town to the other. So it must have been a pretty safe place back then for our parents to let us do that. Of course, the ends were a little closer together back then too, but um, we, there were children everywhere, mothers in the backyards, hanging clothes out on lines, talking over the fences, good smells coming from kitchens everywhere, and sort of sounds like a Norman Rockwell painting, but that's sort of the way I remember it. Um, Lakeview Park was a wonderful place in the summer, cookouts there and swimming and dances in the pavilion. I thought at the time that we came here that Colonial Heights was a part of Petersburg. I didn't know that it was an independent city. Um, we uh, contacted the Tri-City Realtor Agency to help us find a place to live and it was located in Pickwick Shopping Center and that was the most roundabout way of finding an office that I've ever seen in my life because they took us the back way. Um, Colonial Heights then was a small bedroom community. There did not appear to be a lot of growth in the area at that time. And basically what we had was Colonial Square Shopping Center. There was a Grants dime store as we knew Grants to be, a Shovels men's department store, uh, a big star, a colonial store for the groceries, and um, there were Rucker, a Rucker Rosenstock clothing store, department store. The police officers, Bus Rollison and, and the people that were police officers along in that, that early period, mm -hmm. kids did what kids do, but they, they never, uh, they worked with you. Right. Instead of working against yeah, you, right. they they were a friend. Uh, I mean, they, when they had to clamp down on you, they clamped down on you. Sure. But but they they worked with you. And uh, the people that that ran the Rainbow, you know, it was a place where, as a teenager, you know, when mm -hmm. teenagers have problems, you could go out and talk to them, and they they just sit down and and sure. talk with you and. Uh, a big thing was to go to the beach, and sometimes we didn't have enough money to go to the beach, and Joe Poroznik would loan you uh, enough money to go to the beach for the weekend, and if you couldn't pay him back, then you racked balls for him in the pool mm -hmm. room un until you worked it off. Yep. Sure. But they were there and uh, worked with you and were all, you know, talk with you, and uh, it, it, it was... They were good friends. I mean, they had, they took time, I sure. guess. We moved to Colonial Heights uh, on to Lynchburg Street when I was one year old, and a year later when I was two, we moved to where we live right now, Colonial Avenue. And the other day, I walked up Cameron Avenue, and Cameron Avenue is one of those streets that has no new houses on it in the last 60 years, and it looks essentially like it did before. And, and when I walked up that street, it brought back, you know, lots of memories. And... Uh, I guess some of the best memories I have at Colonial Heights is this time of year, getting up at four o'clock in the morning with some fishing worms and catching some uh, grasshoppers on the way down to the ponds and, and going fishing down there. We had to sneak in because we weren't supposed to go in. Why were the ponds, George? Uh, the West South Park is now. Where the, the one right behind the side of American Family Fitness, we call that uh, the first pond. We had them named first, second, third. And the first pond is where we went swimming. When you got about halfway down the road, uh, to, which led to the dump, uh, they had a little cleared area, and we walked out, and there was a, a rock out there we could go out there and sit on. And that's where we went fishing, I mean swimming. We moved to Colonial Heights in 1923. I was a young married woman with a two-year-old daughter. And Colonial Heights then, I guess, was more or less what you'd call a village. And life was very, very different than what we know it today. It was very calm, very relaxed. And when we moved on that street, there were only 15 houses there. It wasn't long until we knew all our neighbors. And there was time for visiting. And if anyone had a need, there was always somebody to lend a helping hand. It was a close-knit neighborhood. I've lived in Colonial Heights since 1955. 
It's 42 years and seen a lot of things in this city change over those years and have a lot of fond memories as a child. Uh, it's just funny, I was thinking about it the last few days. You're just riding from one end of Cologne Heights to the other just to see the changes and things I remembered. Uh, and then I had to stop sometime and just stop to think what really had happened because things that weren't there anymore, you know, that, that we've just built over again. What were some of the things that were, that when you stopped well, that you remember? As you drive up the boulevard, you know, if you, if you look Vincenzo's restaurant right now, I remember in, in probably the early 60s, they built the first drive-in hamburger restaurant in the city of Colonial Heights. It was a place called Richie's Drive-In, and that was right where that restaurant is now. Um, there were little restaurants going around that curve right there, coming up to that restaurant. Um, the old A&P store was where the furniture store there was now. Uh, Pickwick basically was the shopping area for the city of Colonial Heights. Yeah, I was born on Westover Avenue and just moved when I was six months to Lafayette Avenue that long. Yeah. And when we moved into uh, 315 Lafayette Avenue, that was the last house on the block. There was just uh, woods from there on, so it's quite a change now. But my daddy had a grocery store, Angel's Grocery, and I used to deliver groceries for him. I'd come after school and he'd have the boxes of groceries ready that people had called in their order. And I'd get me a candy bar and load the groceries in the car and uh, I'd deliver them to the people around. There was a store in Colonial Heights called Mrs. Rafferty's Poultry. Every Friday I'd go down there. Daddy would have called in uh, the number of chickens that he wanted. And so they in Petersburg. It was on Cockade Alley, I yeah. think, just down towards the train station. So they would kill the number of chickens that he wanted and they'd pull off the big feathers, but they still had to be dressed. So he would uh, I'd go down and pick up those smelly chickens, bring them back, and on Friday night mother and daddy would sit in the kitchen, clean the chickens and the house would smell so bad. So if I had a date, I'd uh, get out in a hurry because the house smells so bad. That's one thing I didn't help them do. I helped them with a lot of other things, but not with that. I lived here all of my life, uh, except the four years I was in the Navy. And uh, I promised the Lord when I was in there, if he ever let me get back to Colonial Heights, I'd never leave again. So. <laughs> I'm 70 years old now, and I'm still here. My brother lives uh, across the street from uh, the home place now, and uh, he's been living there ever since uh, he got out of the service. He built a home over there. And uh, the old bridge that used to be there, uh, they tore it down, and now you can see the home, the, his home place, uh, pretty good. Uh, the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad ran right in the back of uh, his house. I was born down in uh, on Lee Avenue, and uh, we lived there. I don't know exactly how many years, but while I was still young, Daddy bought a service station in uh, West Washington Street, 1848 West Washington Street. And he was also an automobile uh, mechanic, Jesse Ogburn. And so we moved to the service station he was running while he was auto mechanic and he had a lot of neighborhood boys run the station during the daytime. And then when, <clears throat> excuse me, when the Second World War broke out, we moved back to Colonial Heights, moved up on Fairfax Avenue. And at that time, I think I was in about the sixth grade uh, in school. And then Mr. Angel ran a grocery store down next to Dishman's. And uh, so I began working for him, delivering groceries after school. Down at the foot of the hill, as you first came across the bridge and came into Colonial Heights, Danny Gregory had an automobile graveyard, was what they were called then. And during the war, there were no cars being built. There were no car parts being built. It was all going into war production. So as a result, if you needed a car part, you went to Danny Gregory to his graveyard, found the parts you needed, and, and paid Danny. And as a result, he went from you know, rags to riches almost overnight due to the war. 
We had Loyal Today Parade in Colonial Heights. A lot of people don't realize that come May the 1st, it's the Loyal Today. We put that in, that was instituted to counteract the Russians guns rolling through the cities and all this and all we wanted to do was show patriotism. Well, I happened to be the uh, chairman of that parade and I wrote John Warner who was, uh, had just gone out as Secretary of the Navy and asked if he'd be a parade marshal and I didn't speak to Warner until the night before the parade. All my dealings was with his uh, aid. And so the night before Colonial Heights really had gone all out and we had a contingency of wheelchair uh, veterans coming in, also some gurneys. You know what I mean by gurneys. But they were on ambulances, but they were all wanted to be in the parade. Well, Warner came with his wife, Elizabeth Taylor. I've heard many comments about her, but she was the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I came to live in Colonial Heights in 1941. Uh, I uh, was born in Dinwiddie County, DeWitt, Virginia, and uh, I came here to uh, live with my aunt. I was working in Richmond, and, f and so I've lived here all except two years of that time. I was married in 1952, and we moved to uh, Richmond. Uh, my husband was with the federal government and he traveled a whole lot. So uh, one night he was out in Southwest Virginia and he called one night and he said, you know, when I come home this weekend, how about going to over to Colonial Heights and let us try to find a place to live in Colonial Heights? He said, uh, I would feel much more satisfied if I knew uh, you and I had a son at that time who was a little over a year old. He said, I'd feel much better if y'all were in a small town like Colonial Heights and in the big city of Richmond. There were quite a few businesses up and down the boulevard, grocery stores. They had even had an A&P over here early in my life. Uh, but most of your independent stores, we'd always go to Petersburg on Saturday night and I hope some of the people in Petersburg will hear this. We used to go to Petersburg to do some of our shopping years ago when I was a kid from Colonial Heights. So uh, things have changed. I heard someone say something there wasn't many restaurants in Colonial Heights. My mother rented a room to some of the wives of the servicemen that were stationed at Fort Lee, and they had to walk to Petersburg from Hamilton Avenue to get something to eat. There were no restaurants in Colonial Heights. This was before Harnett's was open. This was back in the early 40s when the war was going on. They had to walk to Petersburg because the only place to get something to eat was going down the hill. Some of the older people will remember it was called the Dixie Pig, but it wasn't a very nice restaurant for ladies to be going into, so they walked on over to Petersburg to a restaurant over there to eat. I lived at 1214 Boulevard most of my life. That was the Roses of Picardy Motel, which my father and mother built. We moved there in 1934. Colonial Heights was a village. As a matter of fact, city limits stopped at, uh, right at our street. We lived at the corner of Charlotte Avenue and the Boulevard, and the city, hall, city limits were half a block beyond Charlotte Avenue before you get to Allen's Grocery which was another landmark in the area. And it's landmark come and go. That one went. It's no longer there. They put a big Safeway store right across the street to make sure Mr. Allen couldn't make a living. I think that, uh, that the city still has uh, some development that will continue to exist. I think that uh, redevelopment will occur in uh, numerous areas, such as on the boulevard, which is already starting to occur. I think we'll see a revitalization of the uh, Pickwick area, probably an expansion of the uh, municipal complex area on the boulevard.
And I was born here in Colonial Heights, March 5th, 1930. And I would like to tell you a little bit about Lakeview Park. It was my old swimming hole. It was a beautiful lake. And my girlfriend, Nell Ellis, and I used to go up to Brander's Bridge. We would hide our clothes in the woods and put on our bathing suits, dive off of Brander's Bridge, and we would swim all the way down to the lake so we could sneak in free because we didn't have the money to pay to go in. So, and we had the cables there, real tall. You could hang on them and ride down. We had rope swings, and it was just a beautiful lake. I wish it was still there. 